This module will present the change theme, explaining why change needs to be managed, how Prince2 handles issues and changes, and why managing and protecting baseline products is fundamental to effective issue and change control. The change theme supports the principles managed by exception and focus on products by establishing a clear procedure for handling issues. The issue and change control procedure ensures that the project manager has a path for escalation should issues result in a product or stage exceeding tolerances. There are two management products required to support the change theme. These are the change control approach and the issue register. Prince2 divides its management products into baselines, records and reports. Formal change control is required for all baseline management products. For example, the PID, plans, work packages, approaches and product descriptions. Once approved by the project board, these baselines must not change unless authorised or re-approved by the project board. Without this formal change control, there would be no control of the project. Change control is not required for records and reports as these are considered as dynamic products that can and will change on a frequent basis. Specialist products are baselined when approved and subject to formal change control. More often than not, changes lead to higher costs or longer lead times to deliver the products. Without change control, Changes will almost certainly lead to products being delivered that do not meet the customer's criteria. Therefore, every project needs a systematic approach to handling change. To ensure products are safeguarded, a procedure is also required to record information on all products, including identifiers and versions, copy holders, historical information and status. Sometimes referred to as configuration, asset or product management, this procedure will prevent ad hoc changes by triggering the change control procedure when necessary. The change control approach is created by the project manager during the initiation stage and defines the project's procedures for issue management and change control. It will also define the responsibilities for these procedures as well as reporting mechanisms, tools and techniques. The change control approach forms part of the project initiation documentation and is therefore approved in DP by the project board. It is reviewed throughout the CS process when the project manager has issues to deal with. It will also be used when creating work packages so that the procedures can be written into these. The project manager will also need to refer to the procedures during the CP process when preparing for handing over products to the operations and maintenance teams. There are three types of issue that will be used by the project manager. A request for change, an off specification and a problem or concern. A request for change will usually come from the customer or user environment and will affect a change to the agreed acceptance criteria or product description. A request for change could also request a change to the scope of the project too, like an additional product. An off specification is a product that has failed to meet some criteria during quality activity. It could also be a product that should have been delivered but has not been. Off specifications are typically raised by the supplier or team manager, a reviewer or chair of the quality review team, or by project assurance. All other issues are categorised as general problems or concerns. If an issue is categorised as a concern and is considered formal, then it will be transferred to the risk register and analysed using the risk management procedure. All other issues will be handled using the issue and change control procedure. As issues are raised, the project manager needs to decide whether the issue is formal or informal. If the project manager can deal with the issue without affecting products or tolerances, then the issue will be recorded in the daily log and dealt with. If, on the other hand, the issue will have an effect on a product or is considered important enough to affect the stage, then it should be recorded on an issue report. The issue is recorded in the issue register and is then processed using the issue and change control procedure. Where it is anticipated that there could be many changes during the project,
the project board might look to appoint a change authority to authorise changes on its behalf. It is worth bearing in mind that the change authority role can be allocated to more than one person. For example, the project manager could be given authority for changes relating to work packages, while somebody in a project assurance role could decide on stage or even project level changes. The project board can also put restrictions on the number of changes to any products or the value of the changes in any one stage. A change budget is a sum of money that can be used by the change authority to fund changes. Details of the change authority and change budget should be established during the initiation stage and approved by the project board as a part of approving the PID. The issue and change control procedure gives a systematic approach to handling issues. The procedure is defined during the initiation stage and recorded in the change control approach. On receipt of an issue, the project manager will undertake an initial analysis to determine whether it should be managed informally or formally. Informal issues will be captured and recorded in the daily log and be dealt with fairly swiftly. Issues that require formal management will be recorded in the issue register. An issue report will then be created to capture any information that is already known. The next step is to examine the issue to analyse the effect that the issue has on time, cost, quality, scope, business case and risk. All details of this impact analysis are recorded on the issue report. The issue register may also need updating with details of the issue's priority and severity. After impact analysis, the project manager needs to identify options to respond to the issue. When considering these, there needs to be a balance between the advantage of implementing an option against the costs, time and risks. Any issues that can be resolved within the agreed tolerances for the stage and project can be implemented by the project manager. There may be a need to adjust the stage plan and create additional work packages, but as long as this is within the constraints set by the project board, then this is fine. For issues that cannot be resolved within the agreed tolerances, the project manager will need to create an exception report, which explains the full situation and escalate this to the project board for a decision. Throughout the procedure, the issue report will be updated to record the impact analysis and the issue register will be updated to record changes in priority, severity and status. It is important to understand the differences between an issue report and the issue register. An issued report is created to capture information about an issue that needs to be managed formally and it will be created initially to record the information that is known. Thereafter, it is updated following an impact to include details of the effect that the issue has on the stage and project costs, time and risks, and impacts on other products. It will also contain information on the recommended actions required to resolve the issue, as well as the decision that has been made. The issue register provides a summary of all formal issues that are being managed during the project. Information from the issue reports will be used to generate a register that provides information on all issues at a glance. This helps the project manager to easily monitor all issues. Configuration, asset or product management ensures that the products that the project creates are managed and controlled. It also extends to supporting the use of the product after the project has closed, so needs to address both individual projects and the wider organisation. It is a technical and administrative activity concerning the creation, maintenance and controlled change of configuration throughout the life of a product. Prince recommends that a project support role should be appointed to carry out these activities. Ultimately though, the project manager is responsible for ensuring that such a system is working within the project and that all products are identified, managed and controlled. There are many things to consider when tailoring change. A procedure for handling issues is needed to provide a systematic approach for ensuring that issues are captured and understood. This will also support management by exception by having a clear escalation route defined. Another thing to think about when tailoring change is a configuration or asset management system. In simple projects, this might be ensuring that a filing structure is defined, along with clear guidance to the information kept for each product. Complex projects may need to use a dedicated software tool. There might also be a need to harmonise two or three approaches, particularly when working with external suppliers. 
In all cases, the initiation stage will define the project's approach and procedures through creation of the change control approach. Now you've completed the lessons within this module, you should take the opportunity to reflect back against the module objectives. Consider whether these objectives have been met and whether you need to review any of the lessons. When you are comfortable with having completed the module learning objectives, look over the support materials and then progress to the next module. <laughs>